we're all guilty of impulse buying, scrolling on social media brings many links to fashion, home and lifestyle products we simply must have. Buying stuff is so easy and convenient and will help you create the way you want your life to look. It feels good too, until the credit card bill comes in. So why do we do it? Don't be too hard on yourself, it's science. Here's the psychology behind why we impulse buy and how retailers know this and use these tactics to make us spend more. The psychology of impulse purchases is quite simple. They are often caused by market-related stimuli and external triggers. Retailers know how to maximize the capacity to trigger a positive shopping experience and use these tactics to make us part with our money and buy more. Shoppers who enjoy the ambiance of the store are more likely to make an impulsive purchase. Soft music, lighting, alluring smells, they all relax our mind so that our impulsive streak can take over our decision-making process. Complicated, store layouts force us to walk through more of the store. The philosophy? The longer we're in there, the more opportunity they have to tempt us to buy more. Generous price discounts, sales with huge savings and attractive offers such as three for two and buy one get one free campaigns are the most powerful causes of unplanned purchases. Clever marketing sells us more than the product. It sells us a lifestyle, the prestige of the product and the benefits such a product will bring to your life. And you're not alone. According to research, 62% of in-store purchases purchases are made impulsively and online buyers are more likely to be impulsive. The average American spends $5,400 on impulsive purchases a year. They're always spontaneous and are triggered by a stimulus. The stimulus could be fear, sadness, happiness, stress, or just a desire to reward yourself. Dave Ramsey calls impulsive spending a socially acceptable drug and has three tips to overcome emotional spending. Firstly, self-awareness. 90% of solving the problem is acknowledging the problem in the first place. Secondly, stick to a budget. Dave Ramsey always has a budget and sticks to it. Thirdly, household transparency. What, this old thing? You say to your husband if he asks if that particular top is new. Being honest with your spouse and each other about what you spend will help you stay on track. Anyone can fall victim to an impulse purchase, even the most disciplined budgeters. However, if you find yourself in the habit of spending on impulse too often, here are seven more tips to break your impulsive buying habits. Number one, draw up a budget and stick to it. A budget will help you plan your money and keep track of your spending. Number two, give room for flexibility. Impulsive buying may be an absolute need sometimes and not all impulsive spending is done for the wrong reasons. Regardless of the reason, an impulse purchase is still what it is, impulsive. So go easy on yourself and create room for discretionary spending in your budget. This will permit you to indulge in fun spending occasionally without going out of budget or feeling guilty. Number three, have a list of things you intend to buy whenever you go shopping. Stick to the list and don't purchase anything off it, no matter how irresistible or inexpensive it is, unless it is an absolute need. Number four, give it time. Just as the name implies, most impulsive purchases are made without careful consideration. Leave those items in the virtual basket and come back to them 24 hours later, so you're not tempted to buy on impulse. Number five, know your triggers. All impulse buys are triggered by some kind of stimulus. You can avoid circumstances that give you the urge to spend when you're aware of them. You may need to avoid tempting places or friends who encourage impulsive spending habits. Unsubscribe from brands and mailing lists that tempt you to spend more. You may discover that you spend more whenever you are angry, stressed or happy. Whatever it is, knowing what your triggers are will help you seek alternative options like going for a walk or listening to some music or any other distraction. Don't shop when you're emotional or stressed and don't food shop when you're hungry. These are your vulnerable moments. This leads to retail therapy and impulsive buying. Number six, pay with cash. It's easier to make purchases with the swipe of a credit card. However, people spend less if they pay with cash than with credit cards. Try to use cash for purchases instead of credit cards. When you're going out, keep your credit cards at home and go with the amount of cash you need. You can't buy on impulse when you don't have the extra cash or your cards with you. Number seven, limit online shopping. The internet is a paradise for impulsive shoppers. Online shopping is convenient and easy. You can shop from the comfort of your home and your credit card information can get automatically stored on your favorite shopping sites, making it even easier. To overcome impulsive spending habits, you may have to take deliberate steps like blocking yourself from your favorite shopping sites, deleting your card information from your browsers and deleting online shopping apps. It's okay to indulge in impulse buying occasionally. However, if you're buying more than you need and getting into debt, you might have a problem. I hope this video has provided tips that help you control your spending.